Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today I'll be talking about how I became a self-taught programmer or web developer. Go. Kill it. So um, before I left the U.S., I graduated um, um, with a bachelor's in communications, and my focus during my studies was uh, visual arts. And um, during my studies, I, we had the opportunity to, to learn a lot of stuff. So um, it wasn't really focused on one field. It was like a variety of different fields. So it was a combination of video production, web design, um, print or graphic design, and just different things combined together. So. I had some experience in web design um, and also I, I worked a bit with it but I didn't really um, have a lot of experience when it came to programming or code because most of the times I worked with uh, WordPress and and I uh, I majorly worked in the front end of stuff just design stuff you know so when I moved to Germany um, and after after we got married and I moved to Germany and I started applying for a job in Germany and I discovered that uh, most of the companies that I was applying to, they were um, looking for somebody that was good, not just in designing the website or in creating it in WordPress, but somebody that who, who could program it from scratch. Uh, most of the times um, they were looking for a web um, developer or programmer, not just a web designer. And so um, at that point in time, I discovered, okay, <laughs> there's a problem. I did a little bit, you know, of HTML during during my studies, but that was not really the focus, and so that was a challenge. Okay, it's either you adapt, learn how to code now, or forget about getting a job as a web developer in Germany. I decided, okay, I was going to learn how to program, but I had to learn it in a very short period of time because, you know, I have a responsibility and I needed to get a job as you know as soon as possible and so the first problem was where do I start because <laughs> those of you who program you know that the world of programming is huge there are a lot of things to learn you know and as a beginner um, there is a chance that you could easily get overwhelmed and so I, I started by focusing on web development I was like okay um, what are the languages that I need to learn you know to be able to design a website, a basic website. And that was when I started researching, you know, I discovered HTML, you know, CSS, JavaScript, or um, jQuery, which is a library of, uh, of JavaScript, which makes it easier, um, a bit easier to work with JavaScript. And also PHP, and these are like the four major languages that I discovered that were very important when it comes to um, developing a functional, responsive, um, dynamic website. So I was like, okay, now where do I start? Because those are huge learning curves. Like it's HTML by itself is one thing, you know, CSS is another, PHP and JavaScript, like huge worlds. So where do I start? Um, so I have to start with HTML because that's like the basic language of the web and it's very important. It's the starting, starting place. So I started by learning HTML and CSS and I did all this uh, through YouTube. You know, I started with, with YouTube learning how to program and just practicing like crazy um, very intensely you know so I spent some time to you know practice train I, I I actually devoted like three months like just intense just every day programming for some hours every day every day you know and so um, it was good that I had some you know some web knowledge in, during my studies but what I learned during my training on YouTube was like a almost like a complete completely new world you know so I did that for a couple of months and then I applied for my first job and then I got my first job you know in Germany and that was nice you know it was a good pay and <laughs> and then you know when you're in the working place that's when you discover that it's one thing to train on YouTube it's another thing to learn while you're working um, it's good to have the foundational knowledge and to know what to do or what's right but once you start working you learn on the job like you you encounter different problems 
like it's crazy but once you start working then you you learn a lot because there's a lot of things that you know that keeps you on your, on your toes there are times when you can't even sleep because you're thinking about fixing a problem whatever but it's possible you know to learn how to program or to develop without really having a, a degree you know in computer science it's a bit more um, tedious because you have to learn by yourself and you have to encounter problems by yourself it's a bit stressful because um, there, you don't really have a one-on-one -on -one coach. It's possible to have a one-on-one -on -one coach if you go to a course or a boot camp. So for those of you who are not really good at, you know, self-study, I would say I would recommend that because then you have like a, you know, a lecturer or a teacher that's going to just put you through when you get stuck. For me, I didn't have that, you know, so I had to learn the hard way and that's how I got my first job. Within the short time that I was working, I had learned a lot because you learn a lot on the job. It's like crazy. You you encounter problems, you solve it, and they you know the solutions just stay. You know, so at the beginning it was tough, and at the beginning it felt like Chinese. Like I didn't understand what I was just what I was reading or whatever. It was just what am I doing? It was like very com complicated. So uh, I would say to learn how to program by yourself, you need a lot of um, what do you call it motivation. And uh, yeah, not to give up because it can easily get overwhelming. But like the, the 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 way forward is just to keep going, just keep going, just keep learning. Your brain, it's like it's amazing what your brain can learn under pressure. And if you keep going, so I would say now I love to program, I love to code, you know. But at the beginning it was like crazy, it was intense and overwhelming, you know. And um, you should ex expect that if you're planning or thinking about going into you know, into programming or into coding. Right now, you know, I'm, I'm working in the field, you know, web developer, database developer, you know, and that's the field I'm actually just diving into deeper now. And I have the ability to work from home most of the times, which is one of the reasons why I love um, the job as a developer, as a programmer. You're not very limited to location. Um, you can work anywhere. And um, if you have good experience, you can also get paid well or paid really good. Um, although I would say some countries pay more than other countries and some companies, depending on the size of the company, pay more than other companies. Like in the U.S., there are places in the U.S. where programmers are paid like crazy. Also depends on the language that you learn to program with. Okay, And so I'll be giving you some tips on how to go forward, especially if you're a beginner and you have no computer science degree and you're thinking about you know navigating the field of programming or web development it might be overwhelming where to start or what to do and so I'll be giving you some tips on where to start or you know how to go so yeah um, where to start I would say for every developer it doesn't matter if you're planning to be a web developer or software developer I would recommend starting with the web part of programming so I would say HTML CSS, um, basic JavaScript, basic PHP, it's a good place to start, you know, because then it gives, it gets you familiar with the world of, co of, of coding, with the world of coding, um, you get to know um, code and how, just how it looks like and you can get, you can get, get a, uh, you get a feel of it, um, so you, you decide if it's something that you want to do in the long run or if it was just, mm -hmm, I tried that, been there, done that and so you get to decide, you know, and it's a bit easier to start with those than other languages. Now, what are the other fields that you can move on to? You can decide to focus on um, JavaScript, which is a very huge market. Um, with JavaScript, people create a lot of, you know, softwares, mostly um, web applications. Um, so you can decide to focus on JavaScript and you can learn like different um, JavaScript frameworks like Angular or React and um, node um, the JS for for the back end just you can decide to take the JavaScript route which is very famous and also very high in demand or you can decide to take the PHP route which is like basically my route um, some people are quite afraid of PHP because they're like oh yeah I wouldn't say afraid people are very skeptical about PHP because they think that it's fading it's, a, it's, it's an old language and whatever but like um, companies like WordPress, like WordPress is completely built on PHP. A lot of, you know, um, online softwares or platforms are built on PHP. Most online shops are built on PHP. Um, Magento, um, Shopware, 
just different um, online shop platforms are built on PHP. So I would say PHP is a very strong language. It's not as famous as JavaScript, but it's very strong and I don't think it's going anywhere soon. So you could take the PHP route and learn like, you know, PHP frameworks like Laravel or Symfony and that could be a route to take, okay? Or you could take the software development route and that has to do with um, programming languages like Java, Python, or um, Ruby on Rails. Um, Java and Python are quite known, like they're quite famous. I would say Python is way more famous now and way more known now. It's uh, regarded to be a bit more modern. And so I would suggest if, you, if you're thinking about going um, the software route, I would suggest Python because um, it's also a bit simpler to learn than Java is. So that, that is a route you can take. It's never too late to switch, okay? You can also start with the JavaScript route and say, okay, I'm going to the PHP route or vice versa. Or you can start with the software route and say, no, I wanna stay with the web, web applications. It's never too late to switch. And it's always good if you have knowledge in every field, that's also good. Um, although sometimes people might look for um, professionals that are skilled in a specific field um, depending on the problem that needs to be solved. So I would say um, it's good to focus on the field, but of course, um, during your journey, you can di you can diversify into different fields, okay? But just take it easy so you don't get overwhelmed because like I said, it's it can get overwhelming if you try to do everything at the same time. So step by step. So yeah, like I said, there are two routes that you can take or two ways that you can go about, you know, when it comes to learning how to develop a program. Um, you can take the, 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 the path where you go to a school or course where you have lecturers on site, whether online or in person, especially during this time now and during this corona times, where you have somebody that can guide you, like a boot camp or or like a training course or whatever and that is a route that you can take it's a bit easier it's a bit more expensive depending on the school you attend but it's a bit easier because then they get they get to teach you or direct you you know and you get a one-on-one -on -one experience with a lecturer and so when you're stuck with a problem they're able to help you you know fix it um, another route that you could take um, can be the self-taught route which is like the route I took because I mean, at that time I couldn't afford to, you know, pay for another course. <laughs> I had already completed my degree. I didn't have the money to be paying for another course, and I feel like I, I'm a bit motivated when it comes to learning by myself. So if you're like me and you, you like to learn by yourself and you also want to pay less in the process, uh, you could use platforms like YouTube. There are a lot of resources on YouTube that you can start with. But um, there's another platform I would highly recommend because of the structure. I also use it up till now. There are a lot of developers that use the platform to refresh knowledge, to learn. Um, and even if you were thinking about, you know, attending the course or a school, I would recommend using this platform first to get familiar, you know, with code and everything to see if it's a path you want to take before you invest a lot of money probably thousands in a school okay and um, the platform I recommend is called Udemy and some of you already know what Udemy is Udemy is like an educational online platform it's a website where you go and you pay for courses like there are a lot of video tutorials that are posted by lecturers like experienced teachers on that platform and you pay for those videos and then you have a lifetime access to those videos and those videos are being updated regularly and you can also ask questions. Of course, you don't get like an instant answer because it's not live, but um, most of the um, creators on that platform um, make it a priority to respond to questions or to answer questions. And the, the tutorials are very comprehensive. You find like tutorials that are 72 hours long, 34 hours long, like, like long and structured most of the time. I would say way more structured than it is on YouTube. Uh, most of the cases So I recommend Udemy as a platform and the courses are very affordable. Like I think they range between um, nine dollars to To 13 or 14 dollars and in, in euros. I would say nine euros to 
14 euros. I would say that's the highest I paid for a course. Um, if you're interested, I have a referral link in the description. You can click on my link, you know, for uh, and as a first time user or member, you get a lot of discounts on different programs. Now, this does not only apply to um, IT courses or development courses. You can learn almost anything you want to learn on that platform. Like, it's very diverse. There are different contents that you can learn. If you want to learn how to sew, go for it. <laughs> Whatever you want to learn, it's, it's on that platform. Finally, I would say do not be afraid. <laughs> yeah, it's important. Um, even when you get overwhelmed at the beginning, it is possible. It is achievable. I did it. A lot of people have done it and I say it's a rewarding path to take do not take it because you just want to make money like I said you can all you can be paid good if you are skilled and experienced in the field but most importantly you need to do it because you love to do it and how you know that you love to do it is if you start doing it and practicing it and not giving up eventually you get a feel for it and you know if it's your path or not but I would encourage you to try it out and um, let me know how it goes. For those of you that are already on that path, on that journey, let me know how it is for you. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment below. And do not forget to like this video or subscribe. Look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Bye. Good. Good.